So, a little while ago I was asked by Lee Filters to go out into the landscape and shoot a series of pictures with some of their effects filters. Now these are a series of filters which are designed to enhance natural features in the landscape such as sunrise colours, sunset colours, the tints on autumn leaves and so on. So the first set of filters we're going to look at are the sunrise filters. These consist of a mahogany grad, a straw grad and a straw stripe. This is the scene that I was photographing. It's the River Frome at Wareham in Dorset on a lovely misty morning. But as you can see, there wasn't a huge amount of sunset colour. There's just a, a hint of colour there in the sky, but it's, it's not very strong, not very dramatic. So what I wanted to do was in, enhance that and, and try to bring it out a little bit. So the, the first attempt I had was shooting with the straw grad, which, as you can see, has uh, warmed up the sky quite nicely. I then switched that for the mahogany grad, which I think has given a slightly better result, if anything. I think the, the slightly pinkier tones have given a more natural sunrise look. The next filter was the straw stripe, which was probably the least successful of the three in that it's a little bit yellow rather than pink, and you can see the uh, blue above the yellow there, so it, it doesn't necessarily look uh, too, uh, too natural, too much like a sunrise. Now with all of the filters, the problem I found was that with a, a river scene here, you've got nice colour in the sky, but nothing reflected here, which kind of is a bit of a giveaway in, in terms of the, the fact, showing the fact that you've used filters rather than it, it's a natural effect. So what I did was combine two filters. I put a mahogany grad across the top just to warm up the sky, and then to give a, a bit of reflected colour, I pulled a straw grad up from the bottom. So um, you can see there that you've got colour both in the sky and in the, uh, the water as well. And it looks really natural. The colours are quite subtle, they're enhanced from what was really there, but they look believable. I then tried the same thing using the straw stripe. And although it looks good, I think it doesn't look quite as good as using the straw grad over the whole bottom of the frame. You can see you've got nice colour here in the middle, but then that sort of fades away to a desaturated area here. Um, whereas I think the previous shot was showing a, a much better sort of reflected effect. A couple of things worth bearing in mind with these filters is that they can't actually add something that's not there. Really what you're trying to do is actually enhance the natural look of the sunrise. So if you've got a little bit of colour but it's not particularly strong, then you can use one of these filters or a combination of the filters to enhance the natural colour. Which one works best depends entirely on the situation. So if you have a nice pinky sunrise, then the mahogany grad will probably be the best bet for enhancing that. With a more orangey yellow colour, then the straw grad will probably work best. In situations where you've got an open horizon, perhaps a, a seascape, then the stripe is, is the one to go for, as that will enhance the sort of natural glow that you get right over the horizon there. Whereas with a more rural landscape, such as the one I'm shooting here, the grads are your best bet. Okay, so moving along to the other end of the day, the second set of filters that I was working with was the sunset set, which consists of a yellow grad, a red grad, and an orange grad. So I went down to Kimbridge Bay in Dorset at sunset, and this was the first shot I took using a 0.6 hard grad, neutral density grad, and a 1.2 four stop neutral density filter, just to lengthen the exposure and get some nice misty water washing around the rocks. Now, as you can see, the, uh, there was some sunset color there, but it's not particularly dramatic, and I wanted to try to enhance that natural colour. So I replaced the 0.6 hard grad, neutral density grad, with the orange sunset filter. I felt that I didn't need to combine the two filters because the sunset filter itself does have a certain density to it, so it will hold back the sky and stop it overexposing, as well as adding um, a little bit of colour to the scene as well. I think the result here was really, really nice. It's enhanced the colour so that it looks natural, it's, it's not over the top, 
I've certainly seen sunsets that have these colours in them and probably far more colourful sunsets as well. And uh, I was really, really pleased with this result. The next filter was the red sunset filter, again on its own, not combined with a grad. And although it, it gives a reasonable result, uh, I, I thought the colour was perhaps a little bit too strong for the scene. It, it doesn't look natural enough here. And without the uh, reflections off the wet rocks to, uh, to show that the colour was actually there in the sky, it, it probably doesn't work quite so well. The red grad on the, uh, does actually work well in the right scene, in the right situation, however. So if, if you've got a, a slightly stronger sunset with nice pinky colours, then that red sunset filter will work quite well. Moving on to another scene, this was uh, Swanage Pier at sunset and uh, this is the hut at the end of the pier. The sky, as you can see, is, is a little bit blue and cold. I did really like this scene, but I wondered if it was possible just to enhance that natural warm colour here, as well as introduce a little bit of warmth into the sky. So what I did was I added a, a yellow filter this time, and as you can see, it's, it's delivered a really good result. I, I, th I think this looks very, very natural. It's warmed the sky up a little bit, so it's not quite so cool and uninviting. And it's also just warmed up and enhanced the colour on, on the hut as well. So I, I was really pleased with that. So this is a, an example where the, the yellow filter, the yellow sunset filter, worked really, really well. Just to show you that you, you don't necessarily have to use the filters to enhance skies, um, I took a trip down to Durdle Door, and Durdle Door is well known at certain times of year for getting a lovely warm glow on the cliffs at sunset. Unfortunately, that didn't happen on this particular evening, as you can see. Um, there was quite a nice sky, blue sky with some uh, interesting cloud up there. And I, I used a polarizer just to en enhance that and bring out those clouds. So by adding a, an orange filter, I was able to give the impression that uh, we, we had those colours there actually in the scene. So I pulled the grad down to just below the horizon there so that it, it warmed up the rocks and just the top of the beach there as well as the clouds sitting above Dildor. And again, I think the orange filter gave a, a really good result there. It all looks, to me, pretty natural. <laughs> So we've got one more set of colour effects filters, which is the Autumn Tint set. There are three filters in this set, all graduated, and they are the Chocolate, the Tobacco, everyone's favourite 1980s filter, and the Coral Grad. So I took these to Kingston Lacey in Dorset. As you can see, there's just a hint of autumn colour on the leaves there. Like the other colour effects filters, these are not filters that you would use to introduce a colour that's not there. They work really well if you're actually enhancing an existing colour. So in the early autumn, before the leaves have really started turning, is probably the time to, to, to start using these filters. A lot of the leaves here are still green, but there's just, as you can see, a bit of yellow and, and brown starting to come through here. So this was shot unfiltered, so uh, ab absolutely no filters on, on this one at all. So the first one I used was the chocolate filter, which I think has given a really nice subtle result. It's really bringing out the browns and oranges just in these leaves here. And if you hadn't seen the comparison, you probably wouldn't know that a filter had been used. The next grad I used was the tobacco grad. Now, the tobacco grad has got a, a bit of a bad reputation in some quarters. It's been perhaps very badly used in, in some pictures over the years. But used properly, it can give excellent results, as you can see here. I think the key with the tobacco grad is not overdoing it. So this one, again, I, I just angled it in and I just pulled down the very top of the grad, uh, the, sorry, the very bottom of the grad over the, the top of the trees here. And it's just brought out the oranges and browns that were there in the tops of the leaves. The final one in the autumn tint set then is the coral filter, the coral grad. 
And again, this is a, a fairly subtle filter, a bit like the chocolate crad, although slightly different tints. And it's one that you can pull down a little bit lower into the frame. So again, this was angled in from about here. And it's just done a beautiful job of uh, enhancing the, uh, the, the warm colours that are just where the leaves are just starting to, to turn here. So the last set of effects filters are not colour filters, but they are mist filters. So we've got two filters here, the mist stripe and the mist grad. So starting with the grad, took myself down to Mitchell Diva Woods in Hampshire for the Bluebells earlier this year. And uh, as you can see, it was a fantastic uh, display of flowers. They really were looking nice and there were some lovely lights streaming in from the side but uh, perhaps not as atmospheric as it could have been. So just pulling a, a mist grad over the scene added just uh, the effect of a little bit of haze there, which uh, I, I think looks pretty natural. It's, not, it's certainly not unbelievable. Moving on to the mist stripe, um, here we are at Salisbury Cathedral, just looking at it from across the water meadows. Quite a nice morning. Um, but again, just perhaps lacking a little bit of atmosphere. There's some nice colour in the sky, but you quite often get a bit of mist over the, uh, the water meadows at Salisbury. Unfortunately, not this particular morning. So uh, I had a go with the mist stripe. Now, this is an interesting filter because it, it, it allows you to get the effect of a sort of a low-lying mist, some the kind of thing you get over water or um, floodplains like we've got here. So you, you can see you've got the effect here of a, a low mist over the water meadows with the tops of the trees and the spire of the cathedral just rising above the mist there. One of the things to remember with the mist stripe in particular, uh, but in fact both filters, is that you don't want too much depth of field. If you've got too much depth of field, then you'll actually see the filter itself rather than the effects of the filter. After Salisbury, I whizzed off to Lake Bled in Slovenia to uh, have a play with the mist filters. Lake Bled is a, a fantastic location, uh, especially um, you know, in, in the spring and the autumn when you get a, a sprinkling of snow on the mountains in the background. It's a great sunrise location and you've got the church on the island in the middle of the, uh, of the lake. You see a lot of shots of it in the mist. Again, I was a bit unlucky in that uh, we didn't have any mist there the morning that I was shooting. So just placing the mist stripe over the water, I thought introduced a natural looking effect. Again, the mist stripe is absolutely fantastic for recreating this sort of low lying mist that, that you often get hanging over sort of lakes and, uh, and fields and things like that and I was able just to position it so that the tops of the trees and the spire of the church were just rising above the, uh, the mist. So it all, it all looks very believable. Why create these effects with filters rather than do it all in post-production? For me, there are two reasons. The first one is that I'd rather get things right in camera. It's, it's just that much more satisfying. And secondly, as a working professional, it's just far more efficient. I'd rather be spending my time in the field taking photos than spending hours sitting in front of the computer sorting things out in post-production. So, in summary, I've really enjoyed using these filters and uh, I would have to say that, used correctly, they're capable of giving very natural and subtle results.